Folks, one of the main reasons you buy a small tractor is to tackle your lawn, right? You get a big tractor, you know it's too big to take care of lawn maintenance. You just don't want to drive all over it. Maybe you have the wrong tires on there too, but all that compaction, it's easy to tear things up. But not the case with something like the Summit TX25 or a John Deere 1025 or a Kubota BX or anything in those that smaller range, right? The subcompacts and the small compacts, perfectly capable of handling all your lawn maintenance needs. You might not even realize all the different things you can do with one of these small tractors and take care of your lawn. So let's go through it today. Tools for the spring, the summer, and the fall. Nothing for winter. Just stay off your lawn in the winter. <laughs> but for every other season, there's a tool that you can use with one of these tractors to keep your lawn in tip top shape. Let's start with the obvious. Let's talk about mowers, all right? There's a lot of different mowers out there that you can get. Belly mowers, finished mowers on the three point, even flail mowers here. A belly mower we've shown you on the 1025R. I think it does a fantastic job mowing your lawn. The trade off can be for a lot of folks, myself included, not wanting to take the belly mower on and off to tackle other projects with your loader or your backhoe. You really shouldn't leave a belly mower on there. They don't raise up very high and so they can often be in the way for those other jobs and easy to get damaged that way. So the three point finish mower, obviously it just hooks up right to your three point hitch and the rear PTO. So those are typically gonna be easier to take on and off when you don't need to use it. Now the downside to that is it does make your overall footprint quite a bit longer. You have to kind of learn how to um, turn corners and whatnot with something hanging off your three point when you're trying to to mow your lawn on a regular basis and it can be a little bit harder to maneuver. Now, some of that applies to the flail mower as well, but they are a little bit more compact in nature. They're gonna stay closer to your tractor itself and so it shortens that overall footprint a little bit. We showed you recently how well a flail mower can cut your lawn too, but not only does it tackle your lawn, but you can take it right out into the brush, mow your fields, your fence lines, around your ponds, ditch banks, all that kind of stuff too. Now fall is the best time to tackle lawn renovation if you're looking to revamp it, overhaul it, improve it, any of those kinds of things. Fall is the best time of year to do that and there's a lot of things you can do, a lot of different tools that you wanna to put to work. Now this may sound a little odd, right? But a tiller is actually a great tool for your lawn. And a common question, a common, very common question I'm asked is, I need to level out my bumpy lawn, right? Can I use a box blade or a lamb plane or a rake or something else to do it? And the challenge is sod, right? And if you can kill your sod first, that's gonna make life a lot easier. But even doing so, these other tools are not really gonna be the right tool to get the job done. The best bet, the best thing that you can use is gonna be a tiller. It's going to completely obliterate the area, right? And this may take two, three, four passes and that's okay because you want this to be a one-time renovation and get it done right. So take that first pass or two, maybe give it a few days, let all the sod and the roots kind of dry out and decay a little bit, and then come back and hit it again for another pass or two and even repeat that if you want to. It does not take that long to till. The results are incredibly amazing. You're gonna chop up everything into a very fine residue, a very even blanket, and then you can use some of these other tools to perfect your lawn renovation. And I'd encourage you as we go through this as well, write down the cost, or go find the cost of the attachment, go to our website, we have all the pricing on there. Get some quotes from folks to come out and do it as well, right? If you have the tractor already, you can make a really strong business case for a lot of these tools paying for themselves in sometimes three to five years and the rest of it's gravy after that. A lot of you folks looking to do kind of hobby work on the sides, just pick up an extra buck here and there. Well, you can shorten that payback period even more by picking up just a few side jobs. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. A three point aerator, okay? A core plug aerator, not the spikes. The spikes just poke a hole in the ground and then push all that dirt aside, kind of compacting everything else around it even more. A core plug aerator actually goes down to the ground, pulls out a plug of dirt, okay? And so it allows the rest of the dirt around there to expand, loosen up. That's gonna help with water to penetrate down to the root system. Same thing with nutrients to get down in there as well. It's a great thing to do shortly before you seed, overseed your lawn in the fall too. And it's also a great step to take prior to overseeding in the fall. But typically before I would want to overseed, I would also want to dethatch, all right? And there's a couple of tools that you can use to get rid of that thatch. 
Now, don't get me wrong, there is a certain amount of thatch that is beneficial, right? If you can keep the bare soil covered with a layer of thatch, that's gonna help things from drying out as quickly. And whether that is your new seed that you're putting down or just the existing sod and grass and the roots and everything that you have in your yard already, you wanna have some thatch there. You don't wanna see bare ground. It's just an opportunity for weeds to fill in. So we sell a tool called a dethatcher, all right? It's a very lightweight tool, only 50 pounds. You can pick it up by hand, easy to maneuver, easy to put on the back of your tractor. If you run into a tree with it, you're gonna break it, okay? So it's lightweight by design. That's the intent there to not rough up and destroy your lawn. It's gonna have just enough contact, like a rake that you're using in your hand, to collect some of that thatch, all right? To scarify the ground if you're gonna seed, to make it uh, a soft place for the seed to catch and, and kind of settle down into versus a hard pan. We've gone over the other benefits and uses of the thatcher as well to collect debris, leaves, do some light grading of your trails, all sorts of other things too. And so it's not just a one trick pony. On the flip side, if you have a large property to maintain, maybe you have a lot of different needs, lots of different kinds of debris, uh, maybe you're dealing with geese and all their mess, maybe you're dealing with nuts, right? It could be acorns, it could be walnuts, it could be fruit trees that are dropping everything else and you have pits that are left over. You can get something called a power sweeper, all right? From Sweep All, one of the partners that we work with. Sit down when you see the price, all right? These are not just for your you know, your average homeowner who's gonna go out and use it once or twice a year, you need to have a good case to justify the purchase of one of these, but it's a very unique tool that can collect just about anything you need. You know, parking lot cleanup in the spring, on construction sites, it's gonna pick up whatever is in its way, collect it into a system where you can dump it out later. Now you're gonna get pricing and information, the right setup, they'll answer all your questions at Sweep All's website, and best of all, you can save 5% with code GWT, which winds up saving you hundreds of dollars. Now it's time to put that seed down. It's time for you to overseed your lawn. Well, we have a couple of different seeders or spreaders that you can use for this. We've been showing you the Ag Spray seeder for a long time now, all right? It's electrically driven, so you don't have to worry about hooking up to your rear PTO. They're also quick hitch compatible. It's a lightweight, well, most of these are, but it's a lightweight poly hopper on there, so you can maneuver it around, get it connected easy to your three-point hitch or your quick hitch, easy to move around for storage too. But we've used these for fertilizers, for different kinds of um, granular applications on our lawn. We've also used this for seeding in the fall or in the spring, whenever you're doing a lawn renovation. And you can even use it for the ice melt pellets. You can't use it for salt, but you can almost find a reason or a way to use it in every season there is. And very soon here, we're gonna show you the Befco seeders that we're carrying now as well, available in a variety of sizes and configurations, steel hoppers, poly hoppers. The ones that I got in for demo for video are all the poly hoppers. I just think that while they do cost a little bit more, um, they're just gonna stand the test of time a lot better than a steel hopper will do. And these are gonna be quick hitch compatible, PTO driven spreaders as well that are good for all those granular applications, lime pellets, salt, sand, you name it. They're gonna be good for all these different materials that you can put in there, a very unique combination that's hard to find in the industry. Now, some folks prefer putting liquid applications on instead of the granular stuff, all right? And I like the idea of the granular because I think you get more than one use out of it, right? You can use it as a seeder. You can also use it for your food plots too that way, as well as all the granular applications. And so I, I think if you're spending the money, you get more versatility, more bang for your buck that way. But if you wanna have a specific sprayer because you prefer the liquid stuff, well, get a sprayer. They have three point quick hitch compatible sprayers that are PTO driven. They basically feed a pump that is gonna be on the sprayer itself, all right? So that's how the power is generated. And we've shown you those before too. And super handy, right? I, I think that, well, you do get, potentially a more even application using a, a liquid versus a granular. It takes a little bit more science or math maybe is the right thing to get that, that, uh, that formula, the speed, the pace, and everything else just dialed in the way that you want it. And so it's a little bit harder to use, I suppose, for somebody that's brand new to it. Um, but it is an option out there available and they're available in all sorts of configurations too for your, for your three point. If you wanna get something for an ATV or UTV, they've got that as well. A uh, lot of different setups out there. We're happy to point you in the right direction. Tackling leaves in the fall can be a big project and there's a lot of different ways to do it. But if you can do it without having to leave the seed of your tractor and just suck those things up and dump them out with a lever, well, it doesn't get much easier than that. 
We partner with a company called Protero, all right? They make dump from the seat systems that will not only collect your leaves, but they'll collect your grass clippings as well. If you prefer to bag uh, your clippings instead of having to mulch up or just land all over the lawn, it'll certainly work for that too. They are gonna offer three-point, quick hitch compatible, PTO-driven systems with a big old hopper on the back that makes leaf cleanup in the fall an absolute breeze, right? And a quick tip on this, if you can try to find the dry days to collect your leaves, that's gonna make life a lot easier. If you have a lot of wet material going through the chute, it doesn't really matter what brand it is, they're all gonna clog up at some point and you're just gonna be, well, I, I wanna say banging your head against the wall, but it's just not gonna be very effective, right? And so it's gonna be a time saver if you just time it for those sunny days when things are dry and dry out. And then also don't wait until they're all on the ground, right? If you can do it once a week, once every other week even, you know, the grass isn't gonna be growing as much in, in mid to late fall. You still get out there, you collect a few grass clippings, but primarily leaves. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. So visit Protero's website. They're a partner of ours. You use code GWT, you save 5% off of your order there. That adds up to big bucks. Now we showed you a couple of tools, kind of compared them. I had my favorite, some folks had their other favorite, it doesn't matter, but we're gonna show you this as an option, all right? And that's a drag mat, and this is something you would use after you're done tilling, right? You kind of drag it through there, help everything kind of settle down, getting you that extra finer debris to kind of break up if there's more maybe sod clods or little root clumps that have some dirt held in them. It kind of just, almost like a cheese grater, goes over top of it and just loosens everything up and helps it settle down. And so some will find this more successful than others. However, I do think the other tool that we ran side by side with this one, it was cheaper and I think did a better job overall. All right, and this one is not a tractor tool, okay? But I'm throwing it on this list because I do think it makes a huge difference. And that's gonna be a scissor trap for moles, right? A lot of us have to deal with moles and it's just, they can just, they're so destructive. And I've had moles at every house I've ever been to. You know, my very first starter house, I caught 10 or 12 moles in the first year with a scissor trap. The key is finding the right location for it. You can't put it on a big mound. You can't put it where you saw a mole one time on a mole run and that's it, right? You have to go down, tamp down, find longer, relatively straight runs. They're not gonna be perfectly straight, but a relatively straight path. Take your foot out there, tamp them all down, come back later that day, come back the next day, see what ones pop back up. These are gonna be active tunnels that you can find and they can be hard to locate. Recently, we moved into our house out here and when it was springtime, late winter, early spring, mounds, huge mounds started popping up all over our backyard. I'm, I'm talking, some of these things were almost a foot high out of the ground and the backyard was littered in them. And it was just driving me absolutely nuts. And so I went out there and I kept looking for those long runs like I am describing and they were nowhere to be found, but I kept looking, all right? And they wound up being there right along the very edge where they were going into the woods and coming back out. And I found just one tunnel there and I squished it all down, came back the next day and it had popped up again, all right? I knew that's my spot, put a trap down. A couple hours later, I had caught that mole. I tamp down all and, and kind of use the thatcher rake actually to tamp down and, and, and spread out all of the mole hills that had been created. They never came back up. One mole had created this whole entire area of destruction. I, I, it's almost unbelievable what the damage is that they can do. This is bad, not just if you'd like to have a nice lawn. A lot of folks out there are, are nature lovers, so am I, but nature, you know, let's keep some boundaries there. I want a nice lawn, I don't want, to trip on it and fall and break a leg in a hole. I don't want my dog to, I don't want my kids to, and I want my lawn to look good. So there's no other tool you need to tackle moles besides a, a scissor mole trap. We've got links to those on Amazon on the ones that we recommend and that I've used. It's the only tool you need to get your moles under control. So there you have it folks, a big old list of tools that you can use with a tractor like this Summit TX25. It's a good example. You can go to their website to get more information on it so you can have a good idea of the size, but maybe something is comparable, sort of like a B2601 from Kubota, the John Deere 2025R, things in that size range. And, and you can even go to like a 2032R, a 2038R, um, the LX series in Kubota and comparable models and other brands too. That's really about as big as you wanna go when you're tackling your lawn. If you aren't sure what size attachment to get, shoot us an email. Happy to point you in the right direction and get you set up. The last thing we wanna do is sell you an attachment that is not gonna work effectively for you. 
we'd love to help you out. So whether we sell it or we partner with the company that sells it, you can find information on our website, goodworkstractors.com. Don't forget, we ship all over the USA, so if you need anything for your front end loader or your three point hitch, you can probably find it there. And we've shown you all these tools that we've talked about, all right? They're part of the 700 plus other videos we have out there, so make sure you check those out. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon. Yeah.